got here? Hey, welcome back. You know me. My name is E-Man. Today, I'm going to open and show you something that does. there's only one of a kind. And the, the thumbnail kind of explains it. One of my favorite drums is this 1920s, I don't know what year it is, uh, old Ludwig. It's called the Ludwig Universal. It's, I think, either 3.5 or 4x14 four or 14x4, whatever, however you, I don't care. This is a really drummy, nerdy video, so if you just want to hear what it sounds like, skip ahead. Um, so this drum, they're they're easy to find and they're not too expensive. In fact, let me let me grab it. All right, here we go. It's this thing. This little thing, uh, it's like a cardboard coaster. You can get like. 150 or 200 of them for 10 bucks or something on Amazon. Mike Dawson, thank you. This is a great like drum hack. So your snares don't rattle and you can have them out. That drum is one of my favorite drums. It I have had really great success in the studio with it. Uh, playing on, on some of the stuff that I feel more proud of. And, you know, some of the bigger success stuff that I've done like uh, commercially. And that drum is always kind of like set it and forget it. Look, this is the last time I replaced this head. Going on seven years. Yeah, I, I, I love this drum and it has a thing, right? When people say vintage drums have like mojo or they have this like sound to them or this vibe, it does. And, and I, I've never changed that head since the day I got it. I went to Pro Drum, they put that head on, they fixed a couple of things like the throw off wasn't working. It's got like not original parts on it. it you know, it's not a perfect drum and it's not modern and it's not, you know, expensive and it doesn't do a lot of crazy things, but it does that thing really well. And it's just kind of splatty. It's got a ton of like body to it for being so shallow. For the longest time I've been trying to find a modern drum builder to make me something like that. You know, a lot of people make piccolo drums, they're made out of brass shells, or aluminum shells, or even steel shells, and they don't sound the same. They didn't have that thing. He put me in contact with Grady over at Franklin Drum Company, uh, formerly Risen, and we you know, started texting, and I told him, I have this idea, nobody can make it. Like. I love my Tama drums. Those are workhorses. Like I can do, you know, 60 shows and I know that they'll never fail. If I took that drum out and played one show, I'm pretty sure I'd break it. So after some back and forth with Grady, he, he sends me this picture and it looks just like it. There's only one problem. It's five by 14. It's not, you know, a three and a half or a four and a half inch deep drum. And I kind of threw me off and I was like, ah, shoot, this isn't going to be it. And then I said, you know what? Maybe this is the modern thing. Maybe I need that extra amount of depth to give me a little more more playability outside of a studio situation. I sent him a PayPal. Next day aired it to me. And holy crap, I'm so excited for you to hear this drum. It pays tribute to these old Ludwig Universals. It's its own thing, but it's also very reminiscent of that era type of drums. Let's do an unboxing. Let's go. I'm so excited. I think there's only one possible thing we can do now. Just let's play them and uh, let's see what they sound like. Before, don't even think about it. I paid full price for this drum, 100% with my own cash money. I didn't get a crazy deal on it. I like, no, I paid money for it. I'm excited to have that drum. Number two, I still love my Tama drums. Come on, those are great. Number three, enough. Let's just hear these two drums.
okay, obviously, it's it's not the same thing. So before you start clicking and clacking away, it's like, yeah, no shit, it's not the same thing. But they're similar, and there's like, I don't want to say it, there's like this, like, um, spirit. Maybe because of the way Grady and I approach this, like, whatever third, fourth, fifth dimension that exists in the world knew that we were going for this type of thing, knew that we were trying to get this... I don't want to say, uh, I'm just saying all the things I don't want, but it's very reminiscent in my opinion to that drum. Like I said, I haven't tuned that old drum in forever. So there's like two pieces of gaff, a moon gel that's, that has probably whatever existed before the current pandemic. The head is seven years old, basically. The, the bottom head is original. I, I don't know. It's old on this new drum. I think it came with, with an ambassador, a Remo ambassador, and I put two drum dots on it. So that's the only muffling there was, uh, and it's going through an API 3112 preamp and a 550B EQ, and it's got like, you know, notches taken out and a little bump at 10K and a little bump at 200 hertz. The normal stuff anybody would do in the box or whatever. There's nothing fancy happening here. Leave a comment, subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications. Yeah, make sure, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Follow Franklin Drum Company on Instagram. Follow Steve Gold if you don't follow Steve. Uh, Steve's got a, a great, 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 great Instagram. This is cool for me. It was nice to have like this really old drum, this really new drum. I, I'm excited to test this out on future sessions or playing it live or whatever. I mean, I'm excited to have a new drum. Who isn't excited to have a new drum? Let me know if you want to see more stuff like this. I think that's it. Till next time. Peace.